If you ever wanted to know which band can truly paint a story in your head, then look no more than King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. But I don't just mean through their lyrics. King Gizzard are also some of the leaders in visual storytelling by their videos, and it's all thanks to one man. Our boy, Jason Galea. Our mate, Jason Galea. Jason Galea, he um, kind of worked on pretty much everything visually within the band since the start. Through this collaboration, the band have fused their lyrical contents with the visions of Jason to create videos that have been a visual blueprint for what fans have referred to as the Gizzard universe, or Gizverse. But what exactly does this term mean? Well, for those who are new to the band, the term Gizverse is an idea put forth by their fans that all the band's albums are connected and that each of them tells certain sections of the same story. This is surprisingly bigger than you might know, as there are many published theories from those on Reddit to those that even just annotate parts of the lyrics on Genius.com. But to complicate things further, the band sometimes haven't really helped prove any of their lyrical legitimacy either. I guess they're just things. Sometimes uh, you just kind of think of something and then it uh, becomes a song before you know it. Mm. It's just, you know, you're just getting in there and you're thinking about something and then, you know, you're uh, kind of thinking about it as a song and then there's this music. <laughs> and, um, yeah. You're crazy. I like you. But you're crazy. So a quick disclaimer about what this series is going to be. Given the vast amount of conjectures that exist about the Gizverse, I will aim to highlight the strongest ideas presented by examining both the lyrical and visual art forms outlined. But given there are 13 albums made in just 6 short years, 5 of which that came out just last year, I will reduce the scope of this to focusing on the most relevant albums and those that give the best understanding of the Gizverse as we know it. Remember, these are just my thoughts on the matter, so if you have any other opinions, I'd be more than happy to hear them down in the comments below. But at the same time, I don't want this series to go down a rabbit hole and be led on a wild goose chase that will eventually lead us to making crazy conspiracy-like claims. Trust me, I've had fun reading those semi-loose connections between the albums, which can be quite clever to think of, but I'll stick to focusing on the strongest trains of thought and base this off educated extrapolations and the soundest of reasonings. So tell me, before I continue watching, is there actually any real proof of a Gizverse, or am I just going to be wasting my time with another video? Is it all somehow really connected? Please don't tell me I'm going to get to the end of this and find that there are no real concrete answers and even though you've made it look like you've researched for endless hours and analyzed their lyrics that at the end of the day they're just some psychedelic rock band who are just a bunch of kids who take a lot of drugs and write some stupid fantasy shit that allows people like you to make wild theorists like YouTube videos that are just a complete waste of my time. Please tell me because I need to know right now. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Well, I'll let the band themselves answer those questions. Before we started a band, we knew what the last album was going to be and what the first album was going to be. They're all connected. They all kind of exist in this parallel universe. Mm. that um, they, And they may be from different times and from different places, but they all can coexist in a, in a meaningful kind of uh, way. I fucking knew it! Oh! In all of the Gizzards' discography, no phrase has been more emphatically repeated than Nonagon Infinity opens the door. Alright, maybe their song Rattlesnake beats this, with a mention of the Rattlesnake name 51 times, but the Nonagon Infinity sign has been a cornerstone upon which the Gizverse is founded. But what does it mean? And what lies behind this door more importantly? To answer these questions, let's dive into some of the visual clues Jason provides us and see if we can put some of the pieces of this puzzle back together. The phrase Nonagon Infinity is also the name of King Gizzard's 8th album and features 9 tracks that flow seamlessly into each other, with the last song flowing back to the first, hence we get the Nonagon Infinity. But aside from being a clever reference to the musical arrangements of the songs, the album also produces several interesting aspects of the Gizverse as we know it. In one of the track's music videos, Invisible Face, 
We watched seven robed figures and a crocodile fly in a spaceship to land upon a barren planet. The figure dressed in green uses some form of mind control on the crocodile to possess him to climb up a stalk and plant a bean as referred to in one of the song's lyrics. But as he does so, he metamorphosizes with the plant to become a giant egg with the symbol of Nonagon Infinity attached. From then on, the world around them changes and turns a distinct color red. This is our first glimpse and hint to what the Nonagon Infinity opens, the door to the apocalypse. Flashing back to a previous track, Gamma Knife, we also see another notion of what lies through this door. The phrase, milk and honey for my body, refers to an Exodus biblical passage and is symbolic of spiritual nourishment or a utopia. And the lyric unborn self and wealth of life more than likely refers to immortality. So in these ways it can be said that what lies through Nonagon Infinity is spiritual enlightenment and potentially the secret to immortality. At least this is perhaps what the seven figures believe it to be at first. But when we watch the video we can see the same colored figures from Invisible Face travel up to a peak of a hill with no beanstalk in sight. They place their gamma knives into the ground and in doing so, open the door through Nonagon Infinity. All of this could be symbolic of the lyrics that we saw from Invisible Face about planting of the bean on top of a stalk, as this could just simply mean climbing up to a great height such as a hill, more than likely on top of a mountain, and planting down the tools needed to open the door to Nonagon Infinity, such as the knives. But this entire video and storyline is also very akin to the film The Holy Mountain by Alejandro Jodorowsky, which was also confirmed by Jason himself in an interview with No Film School. In the film, the plot follows seven individuals, each representing a personification of a planet, as they travel to an island to gain the secret of immortality from nine immortal masters that live on a holy mountain. It's also worthy to note that there are seven members of the band, and at the end of the film, we see a symbol connecting the seven individuals with the two others that led him on the journey. This appears very similar to the Nonagon Infinity sign that we've come to know from the album and suggests another link to the film as inspiration. Furthermore, the specific term gamma knife also refers to a medical treatment that uses gamma radiation to kill cancer cells. Now this could be a clever reference to how these figures were hoping to cure their human condition of mortality. But after doing so, we see the same form of egg return and the old familiar symbol once more appears. At the beginning of People Vultures, we see the world completely turn into a sea of red, once again referring to the same change that we saw in Invisible Face. But for the rest of the video, we see quite the turn. The egg appears to hatch, and out from it comes a literal representation of people fused with an enormous sized vulture. This creature goes on to battle and defeat a robot, a wasp-like creature, and a masked figure with red lines. The second of these is a subtle hint towards it being a Big Fig Wasp, another track that is on the album. But it's clear from the lyrics of the song this is referring to a final hearing, potentially of Judgment Day, which once more raises confirmation that the apocalypse is occurring and that these are the times of revelations. This is also backed up by another track on the album, Wawa, which brings up the imagery of several different satanic creatures that are coming out and attacking the world.
And speaking of Satan, the final song on the album, Road Train, also brings up the notion that he has returned and is bringing back vengeance. But coming back to our video, our people vultures defeat all three figures and in doing so we come to a conclusion for what we know for volume 1. Until of course we get to Murder of the Universe.